What's up guys? Welcome back to the channel, Tamir Energy Martial Arts. Sandro, one of our students, is helping us out today. We're going to do some takedowns today, starting off with the basics for the collar tie. Um, as always, if you want to go deep into the wrestling positions, I really recommend you to check out some wrestling channels. But for now, wrestling is not jiu-jitsu and jiu-jitsu is not wrestling, so we're going to add in the things that make it work in jiu-jitsu. Let's just have fun. Oops. Okay guys, so for the beginners in Jiu-Jitsu, let's just first work the basics of the color tie. If you're a bit more advanced, skip a bit further into the chapters or watch the next part of this, uh, this color tie setup. So let's just start off with the basics. So the thing about color tie and tie-ups in general is that shooting from, from space and just doing a shot without a setup is very hard. I will always walk into the sprawl or the counters of my partner. So we have to have some form of connection with my partner and from there disbalance them and get into shots and takedowns. So let's just look very basically at the collar tie. What's happening is I'm gonna control my partner's neck and my elbow is gonna be the part that's pushing but it's also the part that prevents my partner from shooting into me. So if he wants to shoot down to my legs, the elbow is preventing that. The hand behind his neck can be used to pull so that's a cool part because in the gi, we can grab, we can push and pull with one hand on the gi. Now in no gi, we're going to do the same thing. We have to push and pull. In this case, I'm only pushing. And in this case, I'm only pulling. So the cool thing about the collar tie is I can push and I can pull. Now because my hand is all the way around his neck, so it's not slipping off, keep your head up, then we can also use it to rotate. So I wrap around the neck and I can use it to rotate my partner with that one grip. So we have one grip, pushing, pulling, rotating. I want to have my elbow in, so it's not easy for my partner to beat the collar tie on the inside. Yes, so this can happen, but also if you take the collar tie with left, yes, like this. So that's why my elbow is on the inside, curling in, pushing. If my partner backs up, I don't want to have my arm extended, because now it's very easy for him to duck underneath and take my back. So I'm always following with the push of my elbow. Now, as we get into takedowns in a minute, it's also important how we reach over. So I'm not gonna extend my arm all the way. As I enter, I reach in from the inside and I wanna get an angle. So I'm not reaching from the outside. As we go, I go inside, I reach in and grab the collar tie. The leg, uh, sorry, the arm that's reaching for the collar tie, I prefer to keep that leg back. So it's hard for my opponent to now slip through and catch the single on this side. If we were standing like this, it's easy for him to snap down for that single. Now, the problem with collar tie, especially for beginners, is that when I take the collar tie, my partner also takes the collar tie. And a lot of jiu-jitsu guys, especially at white belt, they just assume that this is okay. So when I take it, he takes it. And now we're like two bulls pushing into each other. And most jiu-jitsu matches will be there for a few minutes and no one gets to score a proper takedown. So let's, let's wind it back a little bit. Don't accept a position that's 50-50. So where my opponent has the same control as I have. Because I don't like that. Now he has the same opportunities, the same entries into takedowns as I have. I want to beat him. I want to control the entire inside space. So let's switch positions. That means as I reach in with my collar tie or my dominant right hand, I want to prevent him from getting his collar tie. There's a few ways we can do this. Um, so very basically what I can do is I can control the grip on his right side here. Now it's easy for my partner to curl his hand up and break it out. What I could do is keep the hand at his hip. Now put your hand out, and then I can arm drag and get into different takedowns. But we're already uh, um, getting off track a little bit here. So what I do prefer to do is instead of grabbing the wrist, I wanna keep that inside space controlled. So I find my angle, I get in with my collar tie, and as he reaches with his collar tie, I block it on the inside. Now mind you, I'm not blocking it with my hand, because now again, I can only push. If I block it with my wrist, I can push and pull. And that's so cool. So now we have two things, pushing with the elbow, pushing with the wrist, denying his collar tie, and we can pull. Now from that pulling, we're gonna set up our first disbalance. As we push and he pushes back, we are going to pull. Now the collar tie is in, this is in. We're gonna do a very basic take, uh, take down, a snap down. Now if I just pull my partner down, he's not hitting the mat. So as I push, he pushes back. I'm gonna pull him to the place where I'm standing to snap him down. One hand behind the collar tie and the other one grabbing behind his triceps. Now you could opt to switch this hand lower because if you're on the wrist, it's even easier to drag him down to the mat. So the more I'm on the strong part here, the harder it is to drag, the more I get the end of the lever, the easier it is. And I'm shoving as I myself back up in the position to snap him down and from there I go to front headlock position or spin to the back. 
So let's see what's happening again. I'm entering with an angle. I'm not reaching out. I'm swimming in, denying his color tie. So I'm not accepting the 50-50. Boom. Yeah. Getting in, getting my color tie, denying his. Now we're going to talk about what, what will happen here eventually, but let's just first start off here. Keep control of the hat, the triceps. As I push, hands free. Uh, sorry, I'm not, not going to do that hands free, but just to show you that the pushing is with the wrist and the elbow and then the pulling. Now as I pull, I myself step back as I snatch him not only down, but to where I was standing here. From there, I don't want to stay here too close on my knees because he can either do a sit out or grab my legs and finish a double leg or a sit out, whatever, yeah. So I either sprawl or immediately go into uh, front headlock positions, submissions or the back. So as I snap down, I either get my angle or I like to control, flip him over or whatever, or get into like DARS or submissions. But once again, getting off track. So we spoke about what the color tie can do. Pushing, pulling, rotating. Now rotating can be used. What I like to do is as I circle this leg back and make him do a step there as I rotate. Now from that step, before he hits the mat, so not here, but just before he hits the mat, I can step this leg away and don't put it down, but weave it inside and go for a trip here, uh, like an inside leg trip. Maybe you like to drill that just to get accustomed with the pushing, pulling, rotating. Now let's get into the next chapter. I will, at points, lose the complete inside position and my partner does get the collar tie. Now we can either fight this 50-50 position um, and I'm just going to beat him because I'm better, faster, whatever, or better setups, or I disengage entirely. Now in, in our classes in, in the Netherlands, we call this the, uh, it's like a shampoo commercial. I don't want my students to do the shampoo commercial, which means my head is circling out. I see a lot of white belts doing this. Anytime someone grabs the hat, they circle out. Now it works because you disengage, but there's a, there's a moment where he can easily snatch the hat in a guillotine or a snap down. I'm actually helping him to do a snap down easier now or to do a guillotine, watch the mic, to do a guillotine here because my hat is pointing down. Same thing applies for beginners who are in the collar tie and start looking down at the feet. Now it's very easy to snatch his hat down for snap downs, guillotines, whatever. So I want your back to be straight, yeah, and your neck up. If I don't have to look where his legs are if I wanna go for shots later on. So instead of disengaging with my hat circling underneath. There's a lot of ways to do this. We're gonna do that in a more advanced video. But the basic thing I want you guys to know is at, hold my neck very tight. I'm gonna block his wrist and just disengage. And his hand will go over my hat. My neck stays upright. So instead of circling down and doing this, disengage. And then I retry and try to get the full inside position instead of 50-50. Now, if we do get to the 50-50, you can also decide to just do a takedown from there or setup. So if he gets his collar tie, I get my collar tie. Sometimes what will happen is he tries to get in the inside here. And I try to get on the inside here as my legs switch and we, we battle here. Now from there, there's a few basic takedowns you might at least uh, have seen or maybe know. So like double legs, single legs, body locks, the basic stuff. Now we're not gonna go into the takedowns, but just the setups. From here, I can open my partner, but the risk is now I also open myself. So he can go underneath, grab the unhook, yes, and go for the back, yeah. Good, so instead of opening, there's a few more things we can do with this collar tie. What I like to do is I keep my posture straight and I'm gonna bump this up as I go down. Now, if, mind you, if I, if I have my opponent just standing here, I'm always gonna fall short with the distance. So once again, I want to create some uh, kazushi, some disbalance. As I'm pushing my opponent and he pushes back, that's when I snap down and catch my double or my body lock. My opponent will walk right into it. So we don't have a lot of space here going in. Uh, let's get a bit more here. So as I'm pushing, get the color tie, push back, push back, push back, push back. That's when I shoot in for my double or chain up for my body lock. Now another one that will happen is if his right hand is on the color tie, his right leg is behind. If I want to get the right leg in front, as I pull, he will just slide by. He won't switch his legs. Look. So I push and I make one pull. That's when I snatch down and catch the single. His hat is blocking me for going to the single on the far side. So here, if I want to catch that single, his hat is in the way. If he just switches his legs, 
Now it's very easy for me to go to this one. So my ear drags on his chest as I shoot in, get up, get my angle, head positioning, and get into my single legs. I'm not gonna go into the takedown themselves, but just the entry. In order to get that leg in front, he might be just having the wrong stance, but in order to get that leg in front, I could start pushing and then make one very hard pull as I snap down into that single. So there we have singles, doubles, and now from the double we can, we can also push and go into body locks, from the body locks control to takedowns. Uh, once again, not getting into takedowns. Um, so summing it up, we have the collar tie in general, pushing, pulling, rotating. We have denying his collar tie. We have disengaging his collar tie. And we have takedowns from the 50-50 collar tie. Uh, final one I wanna do is when his hand is blocked, so I do get the full inside tie, but he starts pummeling the right arm in between. You see this? Now instead of keep on fighting, as I feel him pummel, I'm gonna send it over to the other side and snatch a double or anything. Let's go a little bit, have some bit more space. So I deny the full inside positioning. Yeah, he pummels it in, I send it over, yeah, and go for my takedown. So, I create a reaction by pushing and pulling, my bad, by pushing and pulling, and from there on I can set up, let's just say basic takedowns, like a basic single, a basic double, basic body lock, uh, mat returns, not gonna go into the takedowns, but just an introduction on how to use the collar tie to create upper body control, connection, and from that connection, shoot and enter into takedowns. We can go into throws, upper body, whatever. Let's just keep it a little bit with, uh, with this, these takedowns, as you set them up and try to get that inside control. Mind the head positioning, which leg is leading, that you don't switch the legs too much, and then go for like basic takedowns, like singles, doubles, and, uh, and body locks. So, I hope you guys enjoyed. In the next video, we're gonna go a bit deeper in detail on some more follow-ups. Yeah, and I hope you guys check that out as well. Sandro, thank you. See you guys in the next video. Peace.